Welcome back, rivals. This is Zonia, and you are in the zone. Today, we're going to be doing our new blood review. As you can see, we've got four new cards that have just come out this Friday. Our new characters this week are Fonzie, Sarah, Dixie, and El Jaguar. So, let's take a look at all four of these new cards, and let me give you my thoughts on each one. Let's head on over to... Uh, urdb.curlad.net and take a look at each card. So first we've got Fonzie here. Okay, Fonzie. Uh, F Fonzie is our first common two-star from uppers here and uh, at 7-2 his stats aren't all that bad. With a base power of 7, he has the highest base power of all of the uppers two-stars, but not after the abilities are taken into account. Also, his two damage is average on the two-star, but you can probably do better with some others uppers two-star cards. And, well, stop is, well, it's stop. It's very conditional and not generally able to be pulled off. However, he is a 7-5 min 1 and helps avert SOA from your other fragile cards. Overall, you're going to have to decide for yourself if he's worth using for his potential SOA aversion. If your deck is super weak to SOA and you can't fit in Josephine, or you don't have her, then he could be just what you're looking for in a 2-star card. Even if he does not actually get his stop ability off, if he can prevent you from losing your power, say with your Nelly or with Kazayan, then he's done his job. Okay, so on one hand, I would say he's probably better than certain 2-star cards like Bob Joby, Colin, Elliot, Jonas, Mickey T, and Samantha. However, I would say I still probably prefer Jose Star, Salzburg, and Wendell over him in ELO for sure, as well as maybe MacArthur and Gale LD for Turney. He's on par with about Bianca and Muller, I would say. However, for new players and people deathly afraid of SOA versus their uppers deck, Fonzie is going to be a really nice, inexpensive addition. However, if you've got the money, if you've already collected most of the cards, then Fonzie probably isn't going to be anything other than a potential SOA aversion card for you. Up next, we're going to have Sarah. Sarah is a rare three star from Vortex. Vortex has been really lacking a powerhouse three star for a long time, and I think that Sarah is perhaps their answer. With a base power of eight, she has the highest base power, tied with Isabad, but it's not the best after abilities are taken into account. With her base damage of 3 and a variable damage of up to 6, 7, 6, or 3 based on the round, she's going to lose a lot of damage versus SOA, but she's still going to offer 3 to 4 non drable damage via poison at a min of 1, which is awesome! Her life gap is the largest of all of the 3 star cards in Vortex, though we must remember it is going to be damage over time. Her poison is growth, but to me, that is the best kind of poison. It means that she's viable on rounds one through three, so she's not too predictable to come out on necessarily round one or round two only. She will, however, be affected by cancel life abilities and can't ensure forced pill play by your opponent. Sarah is a seriously good three star for Vortex, despite what I think a lot of people are seeing as a very bad three star card that they don't like. That eight power is so important in a non-attack manipulation clan, and while SOA does hurt her, it doesn't stop her from winning. Her damage isn't entirely DRable, and even if it is over time, Vortex can use that time to regain pills. Now, all Vortex really needs is another low star DR other than Nilo. Also of note though, and this is very important, is that she will clash with Sib Leah, which is a very popular 2 star option, so be careful. However, she could help open up other avenues of 2 star play if Sib Leah can be replaced by her. For example, perhaps we'll see Sea Wing come back into play, or perhaps we'll even see uh, Vector as a 2 damage minus 2 op life min 0 card being able to come back into play. Maybe we'll even see Karner Ved come in with that Courage 5 damage. Generally, I would say she's going to be better than Seablade, Galen, Isabad, Cobalt, Marty, and Onyx. She'll be somewhat on par with, but in my opinion still a bit better than Dia, Dreadlash, Kali, Korra, and Sunder. So with no cards that are clearly better than her, I would say she's the leading 3-star in Vortex for now, making her a potential staple. However, there are a lot of other decent 3-star cards in Vortex that are similarly on par with her, so don't expect her price to go through the roof. Also, she isn't exactly game-breaking, so don't expect her to be one of those really pricey rare cards in the future. Definitely get her if you can, though. Up next is Dixie, the rare 3-star from Bangers. She fills a very important low-star DR spot in Bangers. 
Yes, Bangers does have a few DR, but they're all pretty bad, honestly. B-Ball and Juicy Lord, I'm looking at you. With the average amount being 3 nowadays for DR, they just can't keep up anymore. But here comes Dixie. With a base power of 6, that's pretty average for a Bangers 3-star card. With a base damage of 4, that's a bit on the low side for the best cards, but it's more than acceptable because with support minus one damage min two, she'll be packing four DR and mono bangers. That's crazy good. Twice as much as Juicy Lord and only one min higher DR than your Vermin N would be at four stars. But she can also win a round if needed, unlike Vermin N with his only five power. Not that Vermin N can't win, but she has a better chance. Dixie to me is the perfect combination of a great DR with enough power to make you wonder if she'll be played with a few pills to boot. She's not so powerful as to be outright OP, which means that we'll actually get to play with her. But Bangers generally likes to go mono anyway. She's a fantastic card, filling the void for a needed up-to-date low-star DR usable on all four rounds, as well as not really having competition with too many other three-star cards in Bangers. She is sure to become a staple, and this is probably, in my opinion, the best card in this week's release. She's generally going to be better than BB Cool G, Chico CR, Jenny, Juicy Lord, Kevin, Layla, Nakey, Sadie, Sid knows and Tunnin. She'll be somewhat on par with, but generally better than Carlito, Dudzy, Garrick, Kloon, Crink, LD, Lucio, and M. She'll even vie for being the best with Randall and Tasty Taste, I would say. Get a hold of this card very soon. She may not be a powerhouse round winner, but Bangers is full of brute force, and so her DR will ensure that while she's got some competition in her clan, she's always going to have a place in decks due to her necessity. And finally, let's take a look at our final card. Our final card is El Jaguar, the uncommon 5-star for Hurricane. With a base 6 power, this is definitely going to make winning a bit difficult, but anything higher would make him OP for sure. Also, four other Hurricane 5-star cards have 6 power, so there's really no legitimate reason to say he's going to be unusable. With 7 base damage, that is a big hit if he gets through, which means that your opponent is definitely going to pill to stop him from getting that damage in. And with an ability of minus 5 damage, min 2, that is absolutely killer. Think Zornado, with one less power and life gap, but with attack manipulation. Minus 5 min 2 is practically the overpowered minus 5 min 1 gold standard from Sacrom. No other card has such a low minimum with minus 5 damage. Even the other great cards of Bee Bazooka, Rhino, and Jason are a min 3. So the real question is, how much is this really going to matter for El Jaguar? And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this card is going to poten potentially help open up Survivor more. Everyone plays Sacrom and Uppers for its clear dominance together. But now that Hurricane has amazing DR and attack manipulation that will get better the longer you play, this may help Hurricane to start seeing some serious survivor play. They have the attack manipulation, the damage, and now a minus 5 DR, which is the magic number, with a super low minimum. This card has single-handedly allowed Hurricane play in serious survivor decks. This is a T2 card for sure. Do not underestimate El Jaguar. We'll see more Hurricane halves for sure. But I think you can even use him in T1, as he may be the best non-ELO banned card. He's probably better than La Cobra, Lumberjack, Pandagran, and Tecuman. He's on par with El Divino and La Celerosa, I would say. But he's worse than Kinnacha CR and Noctezuma CR. So El Jaguar may not be game-breaking, but he's probably one of the best options for Hurricane and ELO. He also keeps his bonus intact, which is super important and allows for more mind games in round one. However, being DR, opponents will probably expect you to throw off, so you'll get caught more often with those surprise low pill plays. You'll surprise people more and probably end up on the better end of the deal if you almost always either go midway or way in with this card, because then they will have less pills and you'll still have most of your bonus. With that min 2, you're still going to do a decent bit of DR against 3-4 to four damage cards, which will probably be thrown at you most often to minimize the DR against their own cards, which is why that minimum 2 is so useful and makes him so potent. Pick one of these up when you can, but since he's uncommon, there's probably not too much of a hurry. He's going to be a T2 staple for sure for a long time, though. And with that, those are my New Blood reviews. So. As I've promised, 
I've got some credits here. We're going to go into the New Bloods. Maybe you'll notice immediately they've changed the packs. They're no longer, it looks like, at least this week, they did not do these specialized pack covers. We're back to the old style New Blood covers. So we're going to go in. We're going to try and get a hold of some of these rares right now. We're going to buy three Mega New Bloods because that's all I can afford. And I need some credits to unlock some other missions. So uh, we're just going to open three and see how we do. All right. What are we going to Oh, yes! Oh! Emperor Sloan! Excellent! Oh, this is even better. This is almost a better draw because Emperor Sloan's prize is going to hold. Oh, yes! Excellent pack. All right. So here, let me go through the pack real fast. Emperor Sloan, Nanastovix, Fastbender, Wagner, Trixie, Vaka, and Cindy. I'm just going to cover the uncommons and the rare because you can pretty much figure out the commons on your own. I don't want this to take too long. We got Fastbender, again, an amazing three-star card. Um, going to be a definite staple in uh, Riots with the potential to become an 8-5 and Revenge being one of the best. That's great. We've also got Baka. Baka is an amazing card. You can already see he's ELO banned, so you know he's good. Obviously, with that replacement for the DR, he's going to be great. Just be careful because he's not going to be a strong DR up front, which is kind of the balance for him. Then we've got Cindy. Again, Cindy, an excellent three-star card for Jungo even though my daughter seems to not agree with me. She's absolutely fantastic with her 8 power and the ability to reduce um, without being too overpowered because her damage is not going to reduce anything other than the highest. Overall, I really, really like Cindy as a card. And of course, Emperor Sloan. Do I even need to mention this card? I think that's why my daughter is so upset. She's like, why are you even bothering to talk about this pack? Because Emperor Sloan is where it's at. She's absolutely amazing. Definitely going to be a good card um, in the future for many, many, many years, probably, as long as, as, as this game is around. 9-6 with the ability to nullify attack manipulation and increase her attack manipulation as time goes on. Absolutely powerful. Very dominant. Excellent pack. Oh, all right. Excellent. Oh, and it's, it's a double pack. Oh, amazing. This pack just got even better. I didn't even think that was possible. Okay, um, so we got Ratchek, Tormenta, Fonzie, Angora, Fastbender, Arancha, and Dixie. We got Dixie, one of the rares. Absolutely fantastic. We just talked about her, so absolutely amazing. Let's look at our uncommons here. We've got Fastbender and Arancha. We just talked about Fastbender. Arancha, an amazing three-star card. Definitely going to be a super skill staple. Able to be used as an attacker or a defender with the minus three, both power and damage amazing uncommon card and then we've got tormenta i actually bought a tormenta and sold her off got her back an amazing two-star card for frozen absolutely one of the new top two-star cards in the game with the ability to become what it's uh, i think a nine uh nine six and then she's gonna also have you know the plus one uh life per damage being able to hit like nine twelve that's crazy for a two-star. Absolutely dominant card. It's gonna hold a really long, it's gonna hold price for a very long time. We even got Fonzie, which is awesome. We got the, the common as well. Then we got Dixie down here, which uh, we already talked about. Again, an amazing card. I'm super happy with this. Gonna sell Dixie off before her price tanks uh, even more, but absolutely fantastic card. Oh, only downside, if, if there even is a downside, only downside is that it looks like uh, Dixie is not the double uh, mission rare card. So I'm really hoping that I can uh, get a hold of Sarah, since it looks like Sarah is the rare that is going to allow you to open up both of those missions, which I want to open up before the cards are no longer in the packs. So let's get our last pack. This is our last chance. Let's see how we did. We have already done amazing on the other two packs, so I cannot complain at all. Fairbanks! Awesome! Oh, absolutely amazing. This, this was like three amazing openings for me i am so pleased we got four rares okay let's go through these again a jasmine we've got jasmine angora Redek, fairbanks choco raul and fonzie so we got another fonzie which is great sell him off while his price is still high at around three thousand i think jasmine um is an amazing five star card absolutely amazing um basically modeled almost exactly off of the Epic card in FR, uh, Bolza. I, I love Jasmine. Basically, an all stop when she needs to be copy. Stops the bonus, copies it. 8 5. Fantastic card. Absolutely love Jasmine. Maybe not the best 5 star, but really good. A really good 5 star. Choco. Again, a lot of people say she's niche. I think she's perfect for Pussycats because she's got a reliable power and damage. We've got uh, another Raul. I didn't mention this for Raul last time because he did not have the semi Evo ability. 
Raul becomes a 7-2 with a kill shot plus 5 life at level 2, making him a potential 9-9 a potential nine, nine card as a 2-star, which is just as good as Tormenta normally, which is crazy. Raul is one of those cards that you definitely want to get a hold of and keep him at 1-star because he's going to sell for a whole lot. And then our rare is Fairbanks. Thank goodness I got a Fairbanks. I was really hoping that I could get a hold of a bunch of him before he gets out of packs because he's going to be really expensive. The four-star Mona replacement, absolutely amazing, dominant, crazy awesome card. You definitely want to get a hold of Fairbanks as well. Um, definitely going to become a staple in the four-star slot, especially for Montana since they didn't have a whole lot of really awesome four-stars. But unfortunately, as you can see, he's already starting to get ELO banned and with good reason. All right, so Rivals, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to head back into my collection so you can recap. So if you, uh, if you skipped all of the pack openings, you can just look at what I got in my packs. So oh, my daughter is trying to completely unplug everything in my computer, which is awesome. That's okay, daughter. Come here. Come, here. Come sit on that lap. All right, guys, so thank you again for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something, enjoyed this. I hope you uh, invest well. So my money is basically going to be on Dixie for this round. I think she is probably the best of the four cards, in my opinion. Uh, but they are all good. They all fill a needed role in their clan. Um, and overall, I, I am super pleased with my draws for this. Uh, could not have asked for better. Amazing uncommon draws, amazing rare draws everything went well. So, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button, and if you really liked it, don't forget to share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more of my Urban Rivals videos. This is Zonia, and you've been in the zone.